sorry I am late. A couple minutes late. I'm still getting just a couple things ready, of course. Um, you guys are going to be looking at me from a different angle than you usually do. Uh, this is my desk area. Um, it's basically just plywood that we built. I have my sublimation printer up here, laser printer, Cameo 4, Cricut, um, and then of course it's, it's my workspace. <clears throat> um, this right here you might not be able to tell from that angle is my heat press. I have an 8 and one and then also really quick before I forget to remind you, um, let me know if you can hear me just because sometimes I'm always, and you never know, you never know. So just let me know if you can hear me. Um, say hi, I'm gonna set up my computer a little bit closer to where I can read comments because I'm having a hard time seeing from this far away. Um, but this is my heat press. I have um, an eight and one. It's a swing away heat press. I don't know if I can, I did turn it sideways for this just because we'll be using the mud press more. Um, but I do prefer the swing away as opposed to um, my clamshell that I had. It worked just fine. I just, I just prefer this. Um, basically for sublimation, because you want to get an even press, and I think that I get that better with a swing away. Um, so let me grab my computer. And I might, I might take a picture after the live to show you guys um, what I keep my heat press on. I don't really know what to call it. Um, I think I've seen them listed as like sewing tables. But basically, it has a very skinny middle part with drawers. Um, and then I have tables on each side that I can lift up when I want to use them. And then when I'm done using my heat press um, or my tables, if I need extra room, I can just put them back down and then slide it back in. So I'm going to get comments pulled up real quick. Let me know when you're in. All right, I should be able to see your comments when they pop up over here on the computer now. Um, I should have had everything ready. So we're just gonna kind of go over very basics of sublimation tonight. Um, I'm still fairly new. I wouldn't call myself an expert in sublimation, but I do okay on the projects that I try. Um, so if you ask me a question and I don't know the answer, I will definitely try to figure out the best um, answer to your question because I don't want to give you wrong information. Um, but I've been, I've been doing sublimation on shirts um, and regular stuff like that probably for almost a year now. Um, and I just started doing tumblers um, and mugs. This is a mug that I made. It has a very light kind of marble background. But that's a mug um, that I made with the mug press and sublimation. So I'm new to that just because I just got this mug press for Christmas. Um, it's one of the things I asked for, so I'm happy that I got it. So basically with sublimation, um, I see a lot of confusion. Some people think that they can use a regular inkjet, um, which to some extent is true. You can use a regular inkjet printer for sublimation. However, you have to convert it first. Um, you cannot use inkjet ink to sublimate. It just, it won't work the way that it's supposed to. Um, there are only certain um, printers that you can convert to sublimation. I suggest you do a lot of research um, before you purchase. You want to, um, Think about what size you want to be able to print. Um, I currently, with my printer, can print up to 13 by 19 inches. And I can tell you that I would have been very unhappy with a sublimation printer that only did eight and a half by 11. Um, because very rarely on shirts, um, especially adult shirts, am I doing anything less than 10 and a half inches. Um, and I just feel like the letter size paper and then anything really large and above, I do closer to 12 inches. 
Um, so you do want to make sure that you are getting a printer that's going to suit your needs um, size wise. So I did get the one that I could print up to 13 by 19 and I'm very happy that I did. Um, a lot of the printers that can convert are Epson printers. Um, a lot of people choose the Eco Tanks because they're a lot easier to convert. Um, the Eco Tanks, they you, you don't have to buy new um, cartridges for the ink. You can just take out the ink that came with it and pour in sublimation ink. Um, and then you can use it from there. Uh, I happened to get a Workforce 7720. Um, Right now, those printers are almost impossible to find, or they are almost $500. I paid $200 for mine. So, again, I would do your research on your printers. Um, when I converted mine, I did have to get... Um, oh, goodness. Um, what's the word? Refill, refillable cartridges. And I can pull one out and show you what that looks like. Um, and I do have a step ladder in here because, well... I'm short, so. If it'll work with me. Watch, this would be the time that I fall off of the step stool. You know, technology taking its time. All right. And I need to fill these up soon anyway. Okay, I messed something up. But basically, these are the cartridges that I bought. Um, I just Googled sublimation conversion kit for blah, blah, blah printer, which mine was the Epson 7720. Um, and then basically you get these empty cartridges and then you fill them up with sublimation ink. Um, the company that I buy from, it comes in these cool little bottles. Um, I do believe that they've changed their name since I've bought this, um, so they are not Squid Ink anymore, but I believe it's LV Sublimation Ink. Um, but their bottles is really handy. It comes with a little thing um, that fits into the hole that you need to, to, to fill up. So basically you just remove these, fill up your ink in that little hole, and then replace it. Um, Another thing that you'll want to research on your own is the type of ink that, or the brand of ink that you want. I chose the sublimation ink that I did um, because they don't have a specific color profile for their ink. Um, some inks, um, and I can't, I think Cosmo ink is one of them, they have a specific color profile that you have to put on your computer or your colors are not going to turn out right from your screen to your printing. Um, I wanted less hassle, so I went with an ink that didn't have to have its own. So if you do need to do color profiles and need help, I probably wouldn't be the best person, but I could probably point you in the right direction. Um, most of the sublim sublimation ink companies have their own Facebook groups. I would suggest joining the one that you, you buy from, so that way if you have any troubles with your inks or color profiles, those people will know better than just random people in a sublimation group because your settings and everything else like that are going to be completely different um, depending on the computer and the or the printer, the computer, and the ink that you use. Um, so it's just better to go to the source for those kinds of things. Um, so basically, the, there are there are printers that you can buy that are already sublimation ready. Um, Sawgrass is a really big. Um, brand name for those. Those are ones that you just really have to um, buy ink from them. Um, I'm not sure if you can buy different ink to refill with, but their printers come already ready. Um, and then there's people on Etsy that sell inkjet printers, kind of like what I have, that are already converted, so you don't have to do that. 
Um, but I can tell you that I got my printer probably at 2 or 3 o'clock in the afternoon and I was printing by 5 or 6 o'clock at night. So it's really not that difficult to do as long as you do your research beforehand. Um, I'm going to replace this ink and turn this off and restart it and then we will kind of go over what presses we're going to do tonight. Um, so sublimation does require specific blanks as well. You can't just grab a cotton t-shirt, um, or sometimes, I mean, sometimes you can find a random things at Walmart to sublimate, but, um, especially with tumblers, if you want a good outcome, you want to buy sublimation ready tumblers. They're specifically coded for sublimation. Um, and Really, if you, if you don't, you're not guaranteed that the ink is going to even adhere to this. Um, same with cotton t-shirts. You can't use 100% cotton t-shirts with sublimation. Um, it, I prefer 100% polyester. I don't even like 50-50. Um, if you do a 50-50 blend of cotton and polyester, you're going to get a much more vintage look on your shirt. Um, so let's say you have a 50-50, th if this was a 50-50 shirt and I pressed it just now, it would come out this bright, but when I washed it, 50% of this color is going to fade out of that because the ink is only adhering to the polyester. Um, this one I've washed a lot. Uh, I, it, it is 100% polyester. I've found a supplier that um, does colored 100% um, polyester hoodies, sweatshirts, shirts, and they feel like cotton. They don't feel like the sport polyester. Um, so there's lots of different things. I mean, there are a lot of different types of blanks you can use, but you want to make sure that you're specifically getting something for sublimation. Um, I know a lot of people in the groups lately have been buying sublimation tumblers from Amazon that say they're for sublimation, but they're not, and they're not getting good images on their tumblers. So I prefer to buy from a reputable company that specializes in sublimation just so I know that my blank is going to last after I press it. Um, the lady that I buy from with the tumblers, whoops, you get the tumbler, of course. It does have the, the sliding lid. Um, and then hers also come with this rubber bottom. So when you're done, you can pop that on the bottom, and I really like that on these tumblers. Other places will give you shrink wrap with your tumblers um, instead of rubber bottoms. You will need shrink wrap if you decide to use a convection oven for sublimation. I can tell you that the way that I'm going to show you how I do it is not the most common way to sublimate tumblers. Most people buy a convection oven um, and then you, you wrap your, your image just like, like I do these. And then you also put shrink wrap around it. So that way the shrink wrap is putting pressure on the tumbler while it's in the convection oven. I wanted to try with my mug press first before I went and bought a completely new piece of equipment that I needed to put in here because I'm already running out of space. And you do not want to use the oven that you cook with <laughs> to do sublimation. Some people do, that's their choice. I would just rather be on the safe side and not use the oven that I cook with um, to do my crafting with. So I do use a mug press. Um, some people have difficulty with this method. I feel like I'm getting the hang of it, um, but because I'm using the mug press, I don't need the shrink wrap to apply the pressure on the tumbler because I'm doing that with the mug press. Um, so let's see it's this is really hard to see I know a lot of us like sparkle and I still love my glitter tumblers I don't think that I'll ever stop making glitter tumblers um, but sublimation can come in handy because one it takes 10 minutes to finish a tumbler if that um, from start to finish as long as you're not blabbing like I am um, but also it's more lightweight there's just there are just different things that you can do and different outcomes you can achieve between sublimation and epoxy. 
Um, but for those of us that like glitter, and I don't know if you can see this on here, um, there are what they call shimmer tumblers. It gives off a holographic kind of look, and I know it's really hard to see. I'll try to get a good picture of it when, um, when I'm done. But it does give off a holographic shimmer look. So you can still have a little bit of shiny, even if it's not glitter shiny. Um, but you can also mix in glitter with sublimation. I've done that too. So I've done a sublimated base, added glitter to it how I wanted to, epoxied over it, decaled, um, and the two methods together worked really well. And then I have also seen, I just have not bought, they have come out with sublimation glow in the dark tumblers. Um, which I think is kind of a cool concept. So I think next time I order some tumblers, I'm going to try out the glow in the dark ones. Um, so, and then I also do, they have sippy cups. This will be a sippy cup once we have the top on it. Um, and then I have a skinny can cooler that we're going to do tonight too. And the lid screws off. Um, so they do have different types. Um, I have not tried a 30 ounce skinny yet. That's also what I want to buy um, the next time that I order tumblers, just to see if I can pull off the 30 ounce in the mug press too. So basically we're gonna get our images ready before we turn on the heat press. I do have a few of them already wrapped, um, but I figured I could wrap a few of them while I'm on here with you guys as well. <clears throat> so when you're printing your uh, sublimation graphics, you want to make sure that you are printing in reverse. And I know this doesn't look like reverse to you guys, but it is reverse to me because of course, once you apply the tumbler on top of it, it will be the right way. So you do want to make sure that you're getting used to printing mirrored. Sorry, not reverse, mirrored. I generally always make my wraps just a little bit longer and a little bit taller than the actual tumbler because I seem to get a little bit better coverage that way. Um, and to make sure I don't have a white spot on the tumbler, when I am trimming this up from printing, I make sure that the right hand side, my right hand side is trimmed all the way so there's no white on this side. And that will always be the piece that's down on the tumbler and then this piece will wrap over it. Um, and then I do trim off, you know, you don't need a whole bunch of white on this side, just enough to, for the tape to be able to, to grab onto the other side. Another thing you're going to want to have is heat resistant tape. Um, obviously you want heat resistant because sublimation does require your heat press to get hotter than let's say um, HTV or iron on. Um, so these, these tumblers, I'm going to be turning my mug press on to 380 degrees. Um, and then when I do shirts and other things, fabric stuff like that, I turn it up to 400 degrees. So it does get fairly warm. So you want heat resistant tape. And I'm just gonna cut off a few pieces. I've been meaning to invest in a tape dispenser that will fit my heat tape, but I always forget when I'm on Amazon. And these tumblers that I get are completely straight. I don't like dealing with tapered. I feel like I can get it better when it's a straight tumbler. It's just easier for me to design. Um, if I design some of these tonight that we're pressing, I've designed some of them. Um, I bought from other designers. So when you're wrapping it up, um, of course it's, it's kind of easy to kind of eyeball it, but you can always check 
I always have a little bit up here and I know you won't be able to see it because it is light. Um, but you can, you can check your lines up here at this part to make sure that it is lined up. Um, and then you can do the same on the bottom. Make sure that those lines are lined up. And you're just going to tape as tight as you can all the way up that seam. And you just want to make sure you have excess, um, excess design at the top and the bottom. So so you get good coverage at the bottom. Um, um, hey Danny, so I have a Workforce 7720. It's an Epson printer. I've heard that they're really hard to find right now. Um, I kind of got it right before sublimation kind of got big everywhere. <laughs> um, but a lot of people, if you can't find um, a Workforce um, a lot of people also like the Epson Eco Tanks. Um, like I said earlier, though, when you're researching printers, you're just going to want to make sure that the printer is going to be able to print the size that you want it to be able to print. So mine can print up to 13 by 19 inches. Um, so I can fit two tumbler designs on one sheet of paper. I knew I didn't want only letter sized, so that was my biggest thing that I tell people to look for in a printer. Um, but a majority of the Epson printers can be converted. And I think I'm running out of heat tape, so we're going to wrap as many as we possibly can with the heat tape. <clears throat> so the biggest thing when it comes to sublimating tumblers is it's, it's really hard to get a good seam right here where your papers are supposed to meet or overlap. Um, I have found I have better luck. When I take my heat tape and I put a really, I pull extremely, extremely tight on this tape and just run it all the way down that seam. And I don't like, it didn't get tight enough at the top, so I'm just going to just pull it over that lip and just pull as tight as I possibly can. Um, and that's kind of helped me get better, sorry, um, get better seams on my cups. And then if I can stop losing the end of my tape. What's the weather like where everybody's at? I know we have a lot of people that are kind of from um, more southern areas. I'm really cold today. It's about 15 degrees and snowing. We had a couple of days last week where our wind got up to 105 miles per hour. I kid you not, 105 miles per hour. It was miserable. Just got six cents of snow miserable. Yeah, we're getting the snow too, but it's big and fluffy tonight. So I'm hoping that the roads will be okay tomorrow. Um, so basically what I do with my excess design is I fold it over the lip of the tumbler and I just apply another piece of tape, four pieces of tape up here, just to kind of hold that down. Um, it doesn't really matter if it's too wrinkled inside because it's not going to sublimate the inside of the tumbler. Um, and then I do the same thing on the bottom. It seems like a lot of tape, but it is necessary. All right, so we got that one ready. Let's see. I need to print off a couple more things if my printer is going to work now. Oh no, everybody. I might have broke my printer.
Never mind. I did not break my printer. I just have technical difficulties. I can, oh, there it is. I'm just gonna print a couple more things off while I'm wrapping these up and getting the mug press warm. So this is the other design I am gonna use. I know it's not Halloween, but I really liked this when I saw it. So I bought it from the designer. I should have had my tape ready. Always have your tape ready. Because then you get it perfectly wrapped, and then you have to put it down and get tape. Um, and you'll notice, I guess before I wrap this, you'll notice, I don't know if you can see, um, this, your sublimation prints always come out kind of really dull looking on your paper. It doesn't look bright at all. I know when I first printed my first, first print, I was kind of really disappointed because I thought that they were going to be brighter colors. But once the heat activates the ink, it will become bright. So your printer is not broken if your sublimation print is coming out light or dull. It's kind of just a matter of patience when you're wrapping. I remember it took me a lot longer to wrap my my first tumbler when I decided to try this. Now I can get like three done in the time it took me to do one the first time. And if you notice when you get down that some of these aren't as tight as they could be, that's okay. Just pull the tape up and redo it. It's not the stickiest tape, so it's not gonna rip your paper. Oh no, I hope we <laughs> have enough to do this one. Okay, let me retry that. So I ran a little short on tape because if that isn't the story of my life, we're running out of stuff when I need it. But I think, I think this will do just fine. So instead of taping this up here this time, hey Jordan, instead of taping it up here this time since ran out of tape. I'm just going to fold it over really as best as I can to get it nice and tight. And then we'll go ahead and heat up the mud press. So like I said, I have an eight in one heat press. Um, I believe the brand is Fergal. I honestly can't tell you. It was my Christmas gift. Um, but basically it's a swing away. So this is like the shirt press. And then it came with four different mug press attachments. I'm using my 11 ounce mug press attachment. Um, this is what they look like when they're not attached. It's the same type of material that, you know, you have on your, your heat press. Um, and it just warms up. This is how you connect it. Um, I'm not using that one. That one's a 15 ounce, so it's a little too big for what I need. Um, let me unhook this here. And 
and silly me, I have to go plug in. I think I'm knocking into you guys. All right. So we got that plugged in. Basically, if you have an eight in one, it's gonna come, this is like your box that you usually have on your heat press, except this one comes off of the heat press up here and you can kind of manipulate it to where you need it to go. Um, and then I think someone's trying. All right. There we go. I think we should be situated now. So basically you have different plugins on all your attachments and they just plug into your, um, your heat press. So this one came with four different mug attachments, uh, two different plate attachments, and then um, a hat press, and of course just the regular press. I have this kind of situated a little bit differently just so hopefully you guys can see. Um, so I'm going to turn it on. Like I said, you will see most people doing these in a convection oven with shrink wrap. <clears throat> there are a few people that use mug presses. I find it works okay. Um, there's a little bit of, you, you just, with sublimation, it's really just a matter of trial and error. Um, heat presses are different, printers are different, inks are different. Um, I would suggest to test your heat press. Um, when you turn it on, if you have a heat gun laying around the house or a heat tester gun, I don't know what they're called. I know we use it. Um, I would just test to see if your heat press is actually reading at the temperature that you want it to be reading at. Um, but for mug presses, if you're going to try this with a mug press, oops, I set my temperature to 380 degrees. And I'm setting the time for a long time just because I'll, ex I'll explain it once I press it. So I need to pull up a timer on my computer. And so while this is heating up, it's already at 254. This heat press heats up a lot quicker than my other one. Um, but again, I set my press to 380 degrees. I also make sure that I have some kind of towel or oven mitt on hand because you do not want to touch the tumbler after it's come out of a 380 degree press. I can tell you I have burnt myself so many times by not thinking about it. And I'm just gonna adjust you real quick. So basically, when you are doing a tumbler in a mug press, obviously the mug press is not as long as a tumbler. Um, so there, you do technically have to press this four different times when you're using a mug press. And then um, usually 20 ounce tumblers, I will press a total of four times for 30 seconds a piece. And you'll kind of see how I do that. Um, it looks like it's almost up to temperature. And then I was also gonna just show you sublimation on um, a couple fabric pieces as well, just so you could see that. So I'm going to see if I can print those off really quick. And if you're not sure if you want to start sublimation, because it is kind of a little bit to invest in, 
there are plenty of people on Etsy, on Facebook, um, that sell ready to use sublimation prints. So they'll send you the prints and you can use your heat press on your blanks and you're good to go. You don't have to buy the printer or the ink or worry about any of that. Um, so I would say if you wanna see if it's for you, you can order a few prints from somebody and try it before you buy the whole printer. Um, because it can get kind of pricey when you're first starting. One of the things that uh, we're gonna, I'm gonna press tonight is this nine panel pillowcase. When I got my sublimation printer, I didn't really know everything I could do with it. So I bought kind of a mystery grab bag box from a sublimation supplier and I've had that for almost a year and I've never done anything with it. So I'm gonna make my son a pillow because he really likes pillows and blankets and he has a ton in his bed. Okay, so this is ready. Um, so we are going to try this and I will tell you, I'm still really new to tumblers. So not all of my tumblers have turned out perfect. Um, there are some flaws. Some of them turn out really great. Some of them I'm like, oh my goodness. But unlike epoxy tumblers, you can't strip sublimation off of the tumbler once it's on there. It's just, it is what it is. However, you can easily spray paint this, put glitter on it, put decals on it, and no one will ever know what ugly picture is underneath. So that's why I don't really mind um, testing out different methods um, to see what works best because I can always throw glitter on this and make it pretty. So when I start my presses, I always make sure that my tape is either facing completely up or facing completely down. So that way I know where I started and what I have already pressed. I usually start with my tape up. Um, I'm going to pull up my timer really quick because usually your heat, oops, I'm dropping stuff. Your heat press will start counting once it's closed all the way. I can tell you with these, your heat press is not going to close all the way. So it's not going to start counting down unless you have one where you can automatically start it. Mine doesn't do that. So I just have a timer set on my computer and I just kind of watch it from there and eyeball it. Um, okay. So I just slide it in there. I leave a little bit of space at the end and then I always make sure I know where the end of my press was up there. So I'm just going to close it and hold it. Put a lot of pressure on that. And then you're going to hold this one for 30 seconds. My arms do get tired after this. Maybe a convection oven would be easier, but like I said, I'd rather do this and make my arms a little bit stronger than adding another piece of equipment in this room because I just don't have the room. And I think a lot of you can appreciate that. All right, so there's about 30 seconds on there. I know that this middle piece of tape is about where my press stopped. So I'm going to make sure that it gets pressed right at about where it stopped. And we're just going to do another 30 seconds. Oh, there's something on my phone, a black piece of something on my phone. I thought it was on my forehead. Now, if you're smarter than me, you'd be wearing a glove on this hand so you don't burn yourself. But I've already just come to the terms that I just do things to do things. So Put a lot of pressure on that, and then your 30 seconds is up. So this is where the towel or the, the oven mitt comes in handy. So I'm just going to flip that right where it is and make sure that that tape is now on the bottom of the mug press. And then we're just going to do the same for 30 seconds. And I can tell you, even though it is like 10 degrees outside right now, it gets hot standing right next to this mud press. Almost. All right. And then our last press 
Like I said, you're going to want to make sure you grab it with this because it stays hot. And then another 30 seconds. This is usually where I have my true crime on, or music, or sometimes if it's later at night, I have my son read his book to me. You know, 20 minutes of reading every night. All right. So now we're going to pull that out of there. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this right in front of the camera. Maybe I can. It's going to be really hot. So let me see. I do like to kind of pull down. I make a little tear at the top and pull down to see if I got the edges. So now, like I said, hold on to it with your towel or whatever. Because it's hot, hot, hot. And I will tell you, these are usually only good for one press. Once you get your printer and everything set up, the cost of actual printing goes way down. Hey, this one turned out pretty good. So let me see if I can show you this without burning myself. And I'll show you these all once we're done. Um, that seam came out really good. I'll show you a lot closer once it cools down but we'll just move right along. Um, so this one is a sippy cup. This is a design that I designed, so I'm really, really hoping that it turns out because I think it's really cute. Um, and I think it would be really cute for a little boy. Uh, the sippy cups do come with the handled lids. I will tell you it's kind of a pain trying to get your image on this lined up. Thank you, Jordan. I know I saw that and like I said, I was like, I know it's not Halloween, but I think it's so cute. All right, so these, I will tell you, if you overpress an area too long, your colors will come out wrong. So I try to do half of this in the mug press and then the other half um, because if you're pressing the middle for too long, if you get that in both presses, either your black will turn green. Uh, oh, well, no, black, is, black turns green when it's undercooked and black turns brown when it's overcooked. So if you overcook cook parts of it, your colors are gonna turn, be, just be off. Um, what kind of heat press are you using? I am using, I believe it's called a Fergal. It was bought on Amazon, a Fergal eight in one, and I believe it's a 15 by 15 press. Um, but I know he did get it on Amazon and it's an eight in one. Let me see, I need to restart my timer. All right, so we're gonna go ahead, throw this bad boy in there. Like I said, I'm not worried about getting it all the way to the top, I'm just gonna press half of it, so that way I'm not over pressing the middle of that. Oh, and I think these ones, I think the sippy cups are a little bit skinnier to where it does, it will count down, um, which is good be because my timer didn't start like I wanted it to. What printer do you use for sublimation? Uh, Victoria, I use a Workforce 7720, um, but I know that those are a little bit harder to come by right now. Um, but I do know that a lot of people do really like the Epson um, Eco Tanks. And I do really like my Workforce, um, and I would recommend it to people. I just would not recommend that they spend the $500 that they're going for right now, uh, because that's just, to me, insane. Because um, I got mine for $200. And so I expect prices to go up when, when you know, supplies run short. However, I don't feel like a $300 markup is worth that printer. You might as well just buy a Sawgrass. Um, at that price. And of course I keep starting my timer over. So we're just going to say that's been about 30 seconds. Did 
30 seconds, 30 seconds. It's really hot. Really hot standing right here. What do you guys listen to when you're crafting? Do you prefer music, watching something? About a month ago, I don't know what got into me and I decided to sit down and watch all of the Twilight movies while I was crafting. Um, it's been a while. It's been a while. Love the books. The movies, they're a little, they're a little rough for me. I feel like I have almost, I have way too many streaming services. Way too many. We have Netflix, but I feel like I've watched everything I like on there now. Although there's a new game show I'm kind of enjoying on it called The Hustler. That one's been pretty fun to watch. Music, but lately I listen to Bailey. Oh yes, Bailey, I love Bailey. All right, because this one has a little lip on the bottom, I'm gonna go in there and just press that lip for a couple more seconds. Um, so hopefully that color catches on there because I've had trouble with lips, so I'm a little worried about this one. Yes, Bailey, I could listen to Bailey all the time. And I don't even do my make, I don't even wear a lot of makeup, I, but I could sit and watch her put makeup on all day long. I really hope this one turned out. See, this one didn't turn out so well. Parts of it did. But this will probably be one that I end up throwing, if you give me a second, I'll show it to you, that I throw epoxy on. Which honestly, I could probably pull off the same look with epoxy, so maybe that will be one of my next lives, is attempting to pull off this look, but instead with epoxy and other things. So, I mean, it turned out, the design is cute itself. Be brave, little bear. I tried to do a wood grain on the bottom, but as you can see, like, that lip on these makes it extremely difficult for it to pick up color, and my seam on this one, I'm just not happy with. I, so, yes, that's what I'll do. I'm going to do a live to show you how you can take your bad sublimation one and turn it into what you wanted with epoxy. All right, so let's hope these next ones go a little bit smoother. And I'm gonna put my hair up because good gravy. I don't get hot very often, but. Whew. Okay. So tape up is the way that I like. Let's see if I can start my timer. Um, Celia, I think it's Celia. I have really bad eyesight. I'm trying to see from far away. Um, let's see. I've... I've heard of people saying that you can strip sublimation tumblers. I have a problem with that though, because sublimation tumblers are specifically coded to keep the ink on them. Um, it's, I, the best I can explain it is, is like almost like a powder coating, I think. Um, and then it's baked on. So I would think if you're stripping that enough to get the image off, then you are also stripping off the, um, the coating that, that catches the sublimation ink. So for me, I just think it's better to throw it in my, my pile of ones that I can use epoxy on because uh, most of my um, orders for epoxy tumblers are 20 ounce or 30 ounce, which these are. So I can definitely utilize them again. I would just hate putting an image on there and then having that coating be weak. Um, if it did take the image at all again. 
you probably could redo the coating. I don't have the equipment or knowledge or supplies to do sublimation coating properly. Um, I purchase all of mine from um, a supplier. So it could be possible to re recoat them um, if you get into coating them yourself. I just know that I don't have the time to learn. Learn something new. Yeah, that's the thing about sublimation is I'm it's meant to be permanent. So it's extremely hard to strip that kind of stuff off is is the way that I think about it. If you have a good quality blank, your ink's not going to come off. Um I can tell you that I've ordered some mugs before and the coating was so cheaply done on them that the image started chipping right away. Um, so I found mugs now that I like, and it, it, they don't do the same thing. Like I said, I'm still really new to the tumblers and sublimation though. Um, but I think I'm getting the hang of it. I can tell you my first press, I did a We the People tumbler and it came out pretty good. There was a, a seam, it wasn't flawless, um, but I sold it to her for, you know, kind of a cheaper price than I would normally sell them and she loved it. Okay, I'm having a hard time getting the rest of this paper off. I taped this one really good. And I think this one turned out okay. I'm happy with this one. So this is done on the shimmer tumbler, and like I said, I know you can't really see it that well on this video. Um, but I will show you these a little bit better too once they're not so hot. So that one turned out pretty good. I'm okay with that one. I'm okay with that one. After you put the image on, do you have to seal them so they can be washed? Um, so you do not have to seal them. Um, I still would not recommend putting them in the dishwasher because stainless steel, if they are vacuum sealed, the dishwasher can, not always, but it can break that vacuum seal and then your drinks won't stay warm or cold. Um, but this is, this is, you don't have to seal it. It's completely on there. Um, and it's good to go. It's good to be sold. Do you have a website to purchase bulk? Um, like bulk tumblers for subbing. Victoria, I did not put the shimmer on it. I buy it from my supplier like that. So she has, and, um, let me see if I have one over here. This is one of my personal cups. Um, I try not to do too much copyright on, on Facebook, but this is my personal cup. So I will show it to you. Um, and most, a lot of people probably don't even know what this is from. This is a shimmer cup but it's actually blue shimmer. So she has, I believe, a light blue, a light pink, a light purple, and a white shimmer. So this is an image on a blue shimmer base. Um, and it still picks up the other colors really well. This was the first tumbler I ever subbed in my mud press. You can definitely see my seam there. Um, so I do buy them like that. And again, they, they are starting to come out with um, glow in the dark tumblers and I believe they I want to say I saw somewhere color changing but I'm not 100% sure 
um, what printer do I have? Hi, Sarah. Uh, so I have the Workforce 7720. It's an Epson printer. It's a little bit harder to find right now, um, but a lot of people um, that I know have recommended the EcoTanks. I just tell people to make sure that you're buying a printer that will print the size images that you want to be able to print. Um, so with mine, I can print 13 by 19. Um, some of the eco tanks can only print letter size. So you'll just want to, those are things that you'll want to look at. Um, eco tanks, you don't need an actual conversion kit. You can just convert it straight out of the box. Um, Victoria, cool. Uh, so yes, I, um, I'm trying to think of her website name. I purchased mine from, I believe it's Tamara's Tidbits, uh, Tamara's Tidbits, and she has a bunch of different sizes. They have sippy cups that are also have like flip tops. Um, she has the can coolers, she has coffee mugs, uh, shimmer, wine tumblers, so she has a bunch to choo choose from, the, from there, and like I said, hers come with this rubber bottom. Other companies, if you're going to use a convection oven, other companies sell it with shrink wrap, so that might save you money um, in that area. So it's really what, just what works for you, but Tamara's Tidbits is who I get my tumblers from. All right, and then we have one more tumbler to sub because I ran out of tape, and then I will also show you a shirt in that pillowcase really quick, um, and then we'll see if there's any other questions. So let's see. I almost forgot what design I chose. Let me reset my start and press. I tried to do these in my 15 ounce mug press um, to see if I could get it to close all the way. But I didn't think that the pressure was going to be good enough on the 15 ounce to use that. So I just stick with the 11 ounce and kind of do it the hard way. And again, my press is set to 380 degrees. You will notice that when you're pressing these kinds of things, your temperature is going to kind of drop and go back up and drop and go back up. I try to keep a, an eye on my, my temperature. And if it dropped too much, I try to maybe press it for a couple of seconds longer. Ouch. See, that's why you wear a glove. Yes, that is the right website. RT, I, see, I knew it was RT, I thought it was RTS, but I couldn't remember if that was just her Facebook um, name or, because I always search Tamara's Tidbits. Um, I, I've been really happy with the supplies that I've gotten from her. Um, it's fast shipping for me, I feel like. I, I feel like she gets it out fairly quickly. Um, comes UPS. Hey, Ben. What are you doing? I'm almost done. You want to come say hi to people? Mm -hmm. You can come say hi. Just don't touch this because it's hot. You got to come over a little bit closer. He's going to say hi to everybody. Hi. You doing okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll be done soon. Mm -hmm. All right. feel like that did not get pressed long enough. So I'm just going to press it for a couple more seconds. He's a good kid. He's a good kid. There we go. Should have grabbed that a different way. I just take my weeding tool to rip the paper. So this one is going to be a honeybee gnome design and I really hope it turns out because I think it's super cute. I 
I taped it really tight, which is good. You want to tape it tight. This one has turned out. It's always hard to see because I always see the seam last. So this one's okay. The seam's not perfect, but I think that if I take it to one of my upcoming craft shows, somebody will still buy it. So we got gnomes. And again, I'll show you these just a little bit closer once they cool off. Um, that was the last tumbler I had to sublimate, so I'm going to um, unhook my mug press so I can turn on my swing away, and I'm just going to press a couple of uh, shirt and that pillowcase real quick so you can kind of see that. Now this is still really hot. All right. So like I said, if you do shirts, um, if you do shirts, they do need to be, the higher the polyester count, the better. The brighter your colors, the longer your colors are gonna stay, stay um, once it's washed. If you sub on cotton and it shows up bright, it's not going to stay that way. Um, there are people who use something, um, I honestly can't remember what it's called, it's like a polyester spray, um, and they sublimate on cotton. However, I just, I just don't like the idea of that. I feel like I've heard that it can make the shirt really thin right there and kind of wear out. I just feel like I want to use it on the type of material that it's supposed to be used on. However, that doesn't mean that you're stuck with plain, boring, white, sport polyester feeling shirts. There are companies out there that sell, this is one of them, that sell colored blanks, light enough colored blanks that sublimation work. And it's also, and I wish I could, I could show you guys this, it's not like the sport polyester, like the silky, it's more of a soft cotton, and it's super soft cotton feel shirt. So there are possibilities. I know a lot of people don't like the idea of only being able to use polyester. Um, but it is what it is, and I there are plenty of types of shirts out there that you can get that aren't boring sport ones. So I'm going to plug this heat press in really quick. If I can figure out what way it goes in. You know what? I think I'm putting it in the wrong one. All right. So then there's one more. And then I'm going to turn it on. For my shirts and pillowcases, I do about 400 degrees. Sometimes I'll just set it up to like 390 and call it good. So I do need to print off my shirt design. I'm making my Valentine's Day shirt today. Um, I do use, for my software that I use for sublimation, I do use Silhouette Studio. Just the free version works just fine. Um, I used it before I even had a Cameo in my room. Um, but I use that as opposed to Cricut because Cricut only lets you print up to like 6 by 9 or something like that. And I want something bigger. Um, so that's why I use Silhouette Studio. I also find it really easy to design in. So 
we're gonna do the shirt first. And like I said, I kind of have my heat press a little wonky tonight just because I wanted you guys to be able to see. So I'm doing this a little bit more sideways than I normally do. It is very, very, very important when you are sublimating on fabric to lint roll. If you don't, and I don't know if you can see, if you don't, when you press, you can get black marks. And that's not ink from my sublimation printer. It's hard to see, but it's black marks from lint in the heat press. So you want to just, you just want a lint roll. I keep this by my heat press, so that way I can always make sure to do it. I use this packing paper when I ship my tumblers. Um, I don't know, I just find it works really good. Um, but I also use it for my heat press. And then the stuff that I've used that I can't use on another shirt is what I use to pack my tumblers with. Um, so you'll always wanna pre-press to get the moisture out of your blank. Um, but my heat press isn't hot enough yet. So with this pillow, I am going to be putting pictures of me and my son, me and my son, because, well, I think he'd like that. And then I'm just gonna put uh, lyrics to a song that I sang him when he was a baby on the back. And I'm hoping the lyrics fit, let's see. I didn't measure it beforehand. Naughty, naughty. You should always measure, but that'll be just fine. So basically, I'm going to take all these pictures of me and him, and I'm going to put them in the squares on that pillowcase, and then these lyrics, if you know, it's Bruno Mars, but this is a song I used to sing to him when he was a baby, and then I'm going to be doing my Valentine's Day shirt, and that one's just about done printing out. And we're at 214 degrees, so it just needs to warm up a little bit, but these are cool enough now that I can um, show them to you. So this is that first one we did. This one, I'm trying to see this is where the seam was on our paper, and this seam came out really, 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 really good. Um, I really am happy with this tumbler. Then, This seems not as perfect, and I don't know if you can see that in light. I'll try to get a picture of it. But I think it's good enough um, that nobody can really tell. This, of course, was the disappointment, but that I will be scheduling a live for to redo with epoxy and alcohol inks and printable vinyl. But you can see, it's kind of hard to tell, but these have little lips right there. And so I think what I need to do next time is take tape and also just tape really tightly along that lip. Um, and then it'll work out a little bit better. And then I need to get the seam a little bit better on this one. But again, we're gonna redo it with epoxy and alcohol inks and we're gonna get it good to go. So this one's still just a little bit warm, but. And this seam again, not 100% perfect, but I think if I take it to a show, um, an upcoming craft show, that it will still sell. Um, 
I don't think many people are going to be too bothered by that. And honestly, if people pick it up and they do notice it, I can offer them a discount. So I just kind of trim up the designs along. This is going to be my Valentine's Day shirt. So we are going to just press this for a couple seconds to get any moisture out. Maybe. I don't know what happened to my pressure. There we go. So when doing shirts, I try to think about about three inches down from from the collar um, is usually where I like to place my um, designs. And like I said, I'm kind of doing it from an awkward angle tonight so you guys can see. Um, I'm not going to lie, I'm an eyeballer when it comes to shirts. I feel like I can do that just as easy as I can getting out a ruler and so that needs to get just a little bit hotter but this is ready and so we'll press that in just a second um let's see I really like the way that these colors are so pretty and I'll get pictures later tonight of what the shimmer looks like on this when I get better lighting um I just kind of had to do a crazy setup so you guys could see my heat press tonight We'll cut these off for the pillow. I usually only use the cutter to cut off excess when I'm using tumblers and I want my lines to be straight. Um, other than that, it's just as easy to either rip them or cut them up real quick. So hot with these heat presses on, my goodness. Let's see what temperature it's at. 333, just a little bit longer. Just a little bit longer. I was, if I would have had enough tape, this is what I was gonna do on my skinny can cooler. So I'll press that one, I'll order some more tape and put that one on the skinny can cooler. Some people say painter's tape is heat resistant, but it's not heat resistant up enough for that. I tried that first with my first mugs and it completely ruined it. So at least the painter's tape I have is not heat proof or heat resistant. Um, Yeah, I really like the way that this came out. Very happy. And then you can, if I can find it, my rubber bottoms. They're around here somewhere. I'm making you a pillow bed. Yay, what is it gonna be? Pictures of us. Oh, yay. Where is it? I'll make it next. Okay. Oh, 
and make it next, and then I'm going to be done after I make that. Okay? Okay. Love you. All right, all right, 363, almost hot enough. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna have to replace this. So I almost forgot. You also want kind of some kind of paper in between your shirt. I learned the hard way that if you don't put paper in between your shirt, your design will show up on your back too. Um, and it didn't look very good on the shirt that I had it on. So I usually use just copy paper that I have. Um, and then you can't use it between shirts because the ink could still potentially press onto your next shirt that you're pressing. Um, but what I do with this paper instead of just throwing it out is I use it as my glitter catcher when I'm making my cups. Um, so that way at least I'm getting a couple uses out of the paper before just tossing it. Um, so you want your blowout paper in your shirt. You want to make sure that you've lint rolled your shirt. Now we're going to put this design back on here again. Let me see if I can eyeball it one more time. Again, I know, naughty naughty. I should measure. I shouldn't eyeball, but I think I do okay. And again, this one's my personal shirt for Valentine's Day. All right, we're up to 384. I think that is hot enough to press. Now, other people will usually use the heat resistant tape on their shirts too. You can do that, it prevents the paper from moving while you're pressing down on it but I don't seem to usually have that problem with my swing away I did have that problem with my clamshell and I did use heat resistant tape and I need to reset my time so I'm going to press this at 390 degrees for 60 seconds. Um, it seems like a long time, but the shirts do just fine. All right, 60. So again, 390 degrees at 60 seconds. It's again, kind of a, a trial and error thing with your own heat press. Some heat presses read that they're at a certain temperature, but they're actually hotter or cooler. Um, it really just depends. Again, the way that you can gauge your temperature, if it's too hot, too cold, not long enough. If your black on your design turns out green, that means it was too cold. It didn't get pressed long enough. If your black turns brown, that means it was cooked too long. Um, and you'll either want to turn your temperature down or turn the time that you are pressing it for down. So those are good ways to gauge that. And I've had it happen a couple times, thankfully, on the things that I've had the black turn brown. Um, it's been on designs that looked okay with brown text. All right. So this is going to look a little different than if it would have on a white shirt. This is, was a good one to use on this green. So when you do sublimation, wherever you have white on your design, the color of the shirt that you choose is going to show up instead. And your other colors are going to kind of pick up that green as well. So, this is my new Valentine's Day shirt. You float my boat. All right, on to the pillow. Now, the paper that I used in that one, it just depends. You might be able to use some blowout paper again. You just need to look at it. If your design has kind of transferred it all into your blowout paper, you won't want to use it again because then that image can press again onto your next blank. So 
I'm just going to put more blowout paper in here. What brand shirt is that? Love the color. So this one is from, it's called a company called Always Blanks. Um, Always Blanks. They have this, that's also where this came from. Um, they have like mint, peach, rose, uh, mustard, sage, gray, white, cream, um, and they're all 100% polyester. I love the mint color too. I kind of didn't really think about the guy turning all mint, but I actually really like it, so it's okay. Um, you can also find the same kind of colored shirts through Bubbakins, uh, Bubbakins Blank. Um, I just usually try to, I prefer always blanks when they have stock um, because they accept Zezzle. And who doesn't love Zezzle? So, um, but I will tell you that their stock is, it's generally low a lot. There are still a newer company, so I think they're still kind of building up those inventories. And colored sublimation shirts go like crazy. They're hard to get your hands on sometimes. All right. I actually need one more piece of blowout paper in here. This specific pillowcase um, came from a sublimation company called Single J's. Single J's. Um, they have a lot of different sublimation type blanks. They don't do a lot of tumblers, but they have a lot more of this type of stuff. Um, and they do buy-ins. They also have a regular website. Um, I tend to like all the stuff that I've gotten from them as well. So I, I feel like that's another good company to, to buy from. So let's see. The zipper's on the bottom. I want the zipper to be on the bottom. And I'm actually going to cut a little bit closer to make sure... Because sometimes it is hard to see if you are lining those up. I am going to actually take some of this tape from our tumblers, maybe. Since I ran out of tape, let's see if I can... And I am going to tape these down just a little bit, just to make sure that those stay. Um, they also have blankets that have panels like this that you can um, sublimate each little square. I think it's a really cute concept. I think it would make a really great custom um, gift or product for people. Uh, people love their pictures on things. So just funny. So my son, I feel like he just looked like a grumpy, grumpy old man when he was a baby. It just cracked me up all the time. So this is the first time I've done one of these. Honestly, it might go better if I just did one square at a time, but we're just gonna try it. Oh no, I lost one of my pictures. Where did it go? Oh 
Okay. I don't know. I'm going crazy, you guys. I thought I printed off nine pictures, but now I can't find one. Hmm. <laughs> All right, well, we'll figure out what picture is missing and we'll press that one after. Okay, I'm changing my mind. I'm just going to do one square at a time because I feel like it's going to turn out better and I'll be happier. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to do one square at a time. And I got to figure out what I did with that one picture. while this is pressing if I can find that other dang picture. Do you guys ever just have those moments where you just go crazy? Hmm. I might just have to reprint it off. So I'm just doing this, this at the same temperature that I did the t-shirt. If I had enough tape, a good amount of heat tape, I probably would press them all at the same time. But because I don't, I just, I don't want to. I don't want to try to do it in one press and then be unhappy with it. Because I do that a lot. I tend to try to rush through things. And then I'm not happy. just crazy. I just, I don't know what could have happened. This is the hardest part is the waiting. Sometimes I'm not a patient person. you you do get a lot of trash when you're doing sublimation um, one thing I haven't been able to figure out yet if anybody else can tell me is if paper that's been used for sublimation can be used or can be recycled because I'd really like it if it could be recycled figure out which picture I'm missing. It 
It's the boat. I'm missing the boat picture. Almost done, then. Oh, careful. Are you excited for a pillow? Yeah, when is that gonna be done? Yeah, when I'm done with this one, just a couple minutes. You gotta quit knocking into that little bud, please. Thank you. Oh, it wasn't the boat picture. I just did the boat picture. So what is everybody working on tonight? What kind of tumblers? What color glitter? Oh, you know what? Maybe I... I really wish I could find that one. I feel like I'm going crazy. done. We have to press a couple more. And I found, so these are the rubber bottoms that I was talking about that come with the tumblers. Um, it's really just as simple as peeling off that and stick it on like a sticker so then you get that rubber bottom on your tumbler on it it does say no microwave no close to the fire no close to the fire and hand wash only no close to the fire oh I almost forgot that I was pressing something So I will tell you, this definitely would have came out a little bit better if I would have taped them down and taken a little bit more time. But this was kind of a little bit of an afterthought when I was getting stuff ready to press tonight. And I figured he's going to love it anyway. So. Um, I should also add that the lady that I buy the tumblers from that was posted earlier um, in the comments. She also sends metal straws. So you get a metal straw with all of your um, tumblers that aren't like sippy cups or can coolers. Oh no, I've kind of messed up these bottom ones. I just need to figure out which one did we not press. Oh, you know what? I think I only got eight pictures all together. I feel kind of silly. I thought I had nine pictures pulled up. Well, we're just going to do this one. And I'm going to fix it later. Because it's really hot up here. I don't know how much more I can stand next to this heat press. It's burning. So 
so I did. I messed up these bottom parts. Um, as you can see, I don't clearly have them lined up with the, the boxes. That's still really hot. So let me press this back part really quick. All of that is still really hot. Alright, so this one's just about done heating. Um, again, I'll take some closer up pictures of some of these finished tumblers that we sublimated tonight. Um, and then I will schedule a live so we can start with how we will fix this one with just spray painting over it and trying to do the same concept but with alcohol inks and printable vinyl. So we will get that scheduled. I'll get pictures on tonight. If you have any questions, post them in the comments. I'll come back to them later and get them answered. Um, but really, it's sublimation is really fun. Again, trial and error, of course. Um, but once you get the hang of it and you get you get things down, it's it's really a lot of fun. Um, this is still really hot. I know what happened down here at these bottom corners. I didn't, I didn't align them up enough and that was my fault for rushing through it. Um, but as you can see, some of those other pictures turned out really well. And then of course, the lyrics to the song on the back. He'll still love it. I realized why I couldn't find my missing picture and that's because I only printed eight of them off because I'm crazy. So I will get another picture printed on that for him and he'll still love it. Um, don't forget to turn your heat press off. I always unplug mine as well. And then, of course, if you have any questions, just let me know and we'll get them answered and we'll talk to you guys later. I got to get out of here. It is so hot. So we'll talk to you all later.